That's not good. The windlass appears to be skipping. A couple of chains are like, I don't know what it's doing, honestly, as I'm pulling up. We have about 25 feet of chain still down. And um, I don't know why it's doing that. So something new to figure out. If you open your eyes to see What's that out in the neighborhood You grew up in and all your friends The God in you But you're still running from the pain You thought Divine your life Until you opened your eyes So we're at Rudder Cut Key right now, and typically if you're heading south, this is the last inlet you can take uh, between here and Georgetown. And for most boats, that's what they do. For us, we have a really shallow draft, and on a day like today, there's no wind whatsoever. So going out into the sound, it doesn't sound like a ton of fun. So what we're gonna do is there's a route that you can take at high tide through the Pimlicos to get to Rat Key, and that's what we're gonna do today. Awesome inbound current behind us right now, going six and a half knots at barely any revs. The route through the Pimlicos is supposed to be very shallow and very narrow. So I just flipped the chart to be head up so I didn't have to worry about reconfiguring my brain for which direction I was supposed to turn with a north up chart. So this little castle house, I think it's more of a castle, has a really cool story behind it. It's on Darby Island, which is a private island. I actually emailed them to see if we could get access, but they never responded. So. Here we are looking from a distance. But anyways, the story is really fascinating. Apparently it was built by a guy who was a Nazi supporter during World War II. And locals at the time would report these huge bright flashes coming from the mansion at night. And it's reported that he sunk these huge cinder block moorings and he was flashing to German U-boats that they could tie up on those moorings and come to shore for a little R&R. Obviously this is terrible, but history is history. Now, I did a whole bunch of research on trying to find more information about him online and I couldn't really find anything that I thought was like incredibly substantial. So anyways, don't know if it's true or not, but cool history. I can't let you go. There's no way. I'm already so still burning. So hold to me close. Now baby, I do what I'm told. To learn it, to take my chances, to take my time, to keep on dancing, to walk that line, yeah. You got me shifting the paradigm. So we're not even quite to the shallow part yet, and we have about three and a half feet of water under the boat and about two and a half feet of tide. So as of right now, we could make it at low tide if we really wanted to, but like I said, we're not quite to the shallow part yet. the West Pimlico Keys and I believe that's where all the shallow water is. According to the chart, you got to stay really close to the key itself because uh, there's a little channel and then a big really shallow side, side bar, sandbar that you'll run aground on. Coming through here is actually really nice because the sandbars are like pure white sand and you can just aim for the dark blue water. It's been a piece of cake so far. This is about the skinniest part, so we'll see what happens. We've got about three feet under the boat right now. 
So I should probably take a moment and explain that uh, our depth meter doesn't have an offset on it as far as the chart's concerned. So it reads actual depth from the transducer, which is two feet below the water line. So we always just add two to whatever our depth meter says, and that's what the actual depth is. For example, right now, when it's showing six feet on the depth meter, we actually have eight feet of water. Just passed through the East Pimlico Keys, which means we're through all of the areas of potential depth concerns. Uh, we never saw less than five feet on the depth meter, which means we never saw less than seven feet of water. And so with a two and a half foot high tide that we were on, uh, this boat can go at pretty much any point in time and make it. Although I'm not sure I really want to risk it at low tide. It'd be tight. All right. Um, I can't speak without getting hair in my mouth. I'm a little nervous about the chain skipping, so I am going to pull it out and kind of inspect it and see what's going on. Hopefully, we just need to clean the windlass really well, but if there is a problem with the actual chain, I'd rather know it now before I put it back down and, you know, try and ride out the night on it. I'm looking for, like, specks of chain to see if it's, like, flaking off. I've heard of that happening, so I'm really worried that that's what's going on, particularly because it was only skipping on the last like 25 feet that I picked up and that is the part that's in the water the most often. So probably the part that's gonna corrode first, but all of these little specks seem like dirt. So that's a good sign. This is the closest thing I'm seeing that's not like obviously dirt, but I don't know if it's chain either. It could be sand or a million other things. my 25 feet marker so I can take this opportunity to put it back on. Now I'm covered in dirty anchor chain. measured 25 foot line so every time or any time my 25 feet markers come off I just use this line and I know exactly where to put my marker.
six say that we aren't moving. So, the anchor's holding for now, and we're here. So just texted Will, who was our broker, and pretty much our go-to resource anytime we have a question that we don't know the answer to. I uh, texted him a picture of the chain, and he said it looked like it was all cosmetic, as long as there were no visible cracks or anything like that, and there's not. Um, so with that in mind, I think we're gonna be able to sleep a little bit easier tonight. So the tide here, uh, this little bay gets really, really, really shallow. So tide, the way it is right now, we can't possibly get the dinghy all the way to the beach, but we're going on a hike today. Sitting on the boat this morning and I could hear the waves crashing over there on the other side of the island, which is so close. And all I've heard about Lee stalking is that the hiking is supposed to be amazing. Let's go see what it has. definitely off the path and have no idea where we're going so I think we're gonna try and climb a little higher and get some internet access to see if we can get back on track. There's all kinds of little fossils stuck in this rocky crag. It's pretty cool looking. They look like uh, really big uh, roly-polies basically. dead in there. So we obviously got off the beaten path. Sometimes the story that you set out to tell isn't exactly the one that you end up telling. Well, <laughs> we are a little lost. Fortunately, it's a work day. We don't have all that much time. So I think we're going to throw the drone up and see if he can help us out. There are definitely worse places to get a little lost. After using the drone as our eyes and let's face it, a bit more wandering around, we decided that it looks like there's a peak up there that a whole bunch of people go and visit. At least that's what I'm assuming it is. So onward and upward. Gotta be able to 
life without a little obstacles, right? I think we're gonna have to go around. Yeah, buddy. Cannot wait to see the view from the top. tables and then get to work so I guess we'll leave you all here this week see you soon